What made Napoleon such a great general was not the fact that he understood tactics or the brilliant schemes in which to defeat the enemy. Instead, what made him a great general and conqueror was the fact that he knew how to utilize all the resources at his disposal and understood that whole war was necessary to effect momentous change on the European continent. Napoleon's quest for personal glory and for civilizing Europe with its augmented versions of France's revolutionary principles would be known as the Napoleonic Wars. These wars will last from 1796 to 1815 and would have wide-ranging consequences, including the fermentation of the ideals known as nationalism in the nation-state in Europe. In this series, we will look at why Napoleon was able to be successful in the battlefield and the consequences of this success. Through Grassi's ideals, we will look at the Napoleonic Wars in five distinct chronological stages, which allows us to see the true impact of this important and devastating conflict. While Napoleon was a great general in his own right, his tactics and decisions on the battlefield is not what set him apart from the enemies he faced. What did make him so successful was his ability to weaponize the consequences of the French Revolution. One of the strengths of Napoleon's armies was that, it was that of his officers, many of whom first came to prominence as a result of the consequences of the French Revolution. Some of these men that come to mind include Davo, Marat, and Napoleon himself, as he was able to rise to the ranks quickly with the help of not only his political maneuvering, but also his skills on the battlefield. At this point in the story, you might be asking yourself, why wouldn't all the armies during Napoleon's time want a core of highly effective officers? Well, it's pretty simple. The reason why Napoleon held his advantage over his enemies was because the officers of the Anshan regime got their commission either through birth or money, not through skill or seniority. In France, this status changed with the introduction of the revolutionary armies as revolution naturally eliminated many candidates who were of noble birth. Which meant that there were a lot of vacancies in the army's officer corps. Additionally, the revolutionary governments looked for officers that could win battles, as they felt that the revolution and France itself was fighting for its survival. To produce a competent officer corps, one tactic that was used by the revolutionary governments was to use a variety of different punishments, including the punishment of death, if they believed that an officer had failed the revolution by not producing positive results on the battlefield. This action would not only influence officers and soldiers alike to be more aggressive and competent in battle, but also allowed more opportunities for promotions for soldiers like the second lieutenant Napoleon Bonaparte who has shown unyielding support for the Republic and the Revolution by displaying successes on the battlefield. In the case of Napoleon Bonaparte, his successes at the Battle of Toulon and the defense of the Directory against the Royals attacked in what would be known as the 13th Verdemer, in addition to his strong relationship with Paul Barras, who was the unofficial head of the Directory allow him to rise through ranks at a much quicker rate than other officers who were as talented or more than he was. What was left after these measures by the French revolutionary governments was a competent and skilled officer corps that can lead the Napoleon's armies to victory. Another strength of Napoleon's armies was that of the sheer sizes of them. Napoleon garnered this advantage from the mass conscription laws that were passed by the revolutionary governments known as Levé en masse. This concept was first introduced by the Committee of Public Safety in 1793, which called for the conscription of 300,000 men and for all industries to be focused on supplying and equipping the revolutionary war machine. This action would bring the size of the French armies to 700,000 men. The reason why other European nations did not adopt this concept was due to the fear that giving peasants guns 
to allow them to start their own revolutions. On the other hand, the French were able to achieve this task because the revolution had constructed the idea that the people themselves must defend the French nation. This idea can be seen in the decree establishing the levee en masse for August 23, 1793, which stated that until the enemies have been driven from the territory of the Republic, the French people are in permanent requisition for army service. From 1798 to 1810, Napoleon would call for a yearly draft of 80,000 men a year, which would only increase in the last few years of the war. In terms of the strategic innovations that Napoleon made to his armies, one key advancement was the willingness to destroy the enemy's ability to carry out combat operations. This concept did not really exist during the Anshan regime, as the conflicts during this time, late 15th century until 1789, had very few battles or climactic battles at that. The reason being that the rulers of the Anshan regime were unwilling to take the risks of fighting decisive battles because they feared the political and financial costs that could be associated with these types of calamitous events. This political calculus resulted in most battles being avoided, especially if an opposing general had positioned their army in a better situation. It was for this reason that when battles were fought, that the victorious general usually did not attempt to cut off the retreating army as most generals of the time saw battles as a necessary evil that should be avoided at all costs. Napoleon would radically change his mindset with his first campaign in Italy in 1796. Throughout this campaign, Napoleon would constantly harass the enemy and would outwork the enemy general by studying the terrain and by understanding the state of his armies. Additionally, instead of retreating at the first sign of trouble, he was not afraid to work through difficult circumstances or through his own mistakes. Moreover, he looked to destroy the enemy, as was shown at the Battle of Lodi. During this battle, instead of letting an already retreating army accomplish its action, he decided to give battle in the hope of taking the enemy army off the campaign map, which he did time and time again. Finally, Napoleon's campaign in Italy also highlighted the way in which he treated the armies and men under his command. Instead of not caring for the men under his command, Napoleon wanted to keep his armies and generals happy by giving them medals and financial rewards from the indemnities that he forced on enemy states. These steps were taken to inspire his soldiers to be able to take more casualties and created what was to be known as an esprit de corps, or a feeling of pride, fellowship, and common loyalty shared by the members of a particular group. These steps, specifically these indemnities, also meant that when his armies crossed or conquered enemy territory, they extracted large amounts of wealth from these provinces. This action made many of the locals extremely hostile to Napoleon's legitimacy in the area, and at times his hostility led to open revolt, which significantly drained France's martial strength and would eventually lead to Napoleon's ruin. Another aspect of Napoleon's conquests was the introduction of his liberal-minded political project, this political project included his Napoleonic Law Code, which still serves as the basis for many legal codes around the world. The curtailing of aristocratic privileges and undermining the church's power, Napoleon's political project would also influence many liberal-minded thinkers or bureaucrats to join Napoleon's cause once he had conquered their country. In other words, it would make subjugation and integration into Napoleon's empire much easier. For some states, that is. When discussing the military technology that was used by the armies of the Napoleonic Wars, they used relatively the same weapons that were employed during the American Revolutionary War. The biggest contribution that Napoleon made to the use of military technology was through the massing of cannons, or what was to be known as a grand battery, which he used to soften up the enemy line for a decisive attack. In the end, all these factors will culminate into what would be known as the Grand Armée which was the military machine that would dominate the European battlefield for seven years. This fighting force was crafted in 1803 and originally purposed for an invasion of England. The Grand Armée consisted of 210,000 well-trained and highly motivated soldiers who were led by some of the best generals that Europe had ever seen. In 1805, this armed force would be let loose on the continent. <laughs>